I'll, I'll plan a talk depending on your interest level and so on. And I'll, I don't mind keeping it a little interactive. I will ask you a few questions on the way, but you are also welcome to get any clarifications on the spot. If you have any deep questions, write it down and I'll keep some time at the end to answer that. But if you have some instant clarifications, ask me immediately. So that cannot wait for a long time. But in general, most of your questions will be answered in the next slide. So just be patient for 30 seconds, 60 seconds. So let me start off. Uh, welcome to this uh, Tech Cube. Uh, this is a very well put together program, let me say that. And uh, I have no noticed that many of you are from literally all over the country. This, literally, this is a microcosm of the whole country as such. Uh, what I was even more happy to see was uh, you also represent multiple branches. C is for uh, chemical engineering. So your mechanical, chemical, manufacturing, I saw IT is there and other branches which is very happy and you will understand in a few minutes why I am so happy about it. Okay. So my uh, talk today is about, although it is about BETIC, but it is not about BETIC as much. It is about innovation ecosystem. You know that at this point of time, everyone is looking at innovation as the mantra for maybe solving many problems, social problems, healthcare problems, industrial problems, manufacturing problems, and of course, <coughs> employment, so-called employment problem also. So I'll talk more about the ecosystem. We'll talk about the ecosystem. We'll talk about um, how do you build the ecosystem. And through the whole thing, I'll mention, of course, the BETIC experiment that we have done. So let me put the background first. At this point of time, if you go out in the market, not in India, let's say go out market anywhere in the world, it will be very difficult to see any product which is made in India. It's mostly, and we are buying by the tons of it, literally hundreds of tons of it, consumer goods, you're talking about defense, okay? you're talking about uh, machinery for machine tools, you're talking about medical devices, which we'll mention a little bit more, and of course, uh, all kinds of other stuff. All over the place, we are just buying, buying, buying from all over the world. Okay? But having said that, don't you think we can develop it ourselves? Don't we have the enough innovation and creativity potential in the country? And if you just look at India, Jugaad on Google, and you will find wonderful examples. You want to cut onions without getting tears. You want to shave without a mirror. You want to make lassi in a, in a washing machine. Um, put your uh, truck tires on bullock carts. Okay. Um, and the last bottom is your Jaipur leg, where no engineers were involved. Jaipur leg is a completely doctor and a craftsman innovation. Okay. And it has already helped 500,000, 5 lakh uh, patients without legs. Okay. So something is missing, maybe, and I'll kind of put elements of what I call as the innovation ecosystem. The main issue is that we academics and our students and our research associates, we usually say that, hey, I got some brilliant idea, and we at the most spend some time and energy to convert into what is called as a proof of concept. Okay. And um, we all have, or many of your institutions have incubators. Can I just have a show of hands? How many of our colleges have a business incubator? Really? Hotel incubation centers, hotel tinkering labs, bio incubators, business incubators, so this is the way to go. So I think you are still in dark ages. Wake up, okay? Uh, government is giving a lot of money to education institutes to set up incubators where your students can take your ideas, POCs, to prototypes, 3D printing, electronics, software prototyping, app building, all those things. But that is not enough. You also need to convert the prototype into a product. A product is something which can be actually be used, tested in the field. And that's a big value of depth, what we call as. Okay. You have something called as accelerator, but I will not mention that because we are still in incubator stage, most of you. But accelerator is typically a place where you can actually accelerate to business completely. Most of the incubators are skipping this step and going directly to market. But even there, you have multiple values of death. You have what's called as regulatory compliances. The moment you have consumer electronics or maybe a medical product, you need to prove its safety and efficacy. You need to have license. You need to prove all the tests. So regulatory compliances, they're talking about actual mass production, which is a different ball game completely from what we do in our laboratories. Okay? And of course, you have to worry about distribution channel, sales channel, money for scaling up, and so on. So all these values of death are there. But we academics think that, OK, if I got an idea and someone, let's say, commercializes that, I should get 40% market share, or 40% equity, sorry. Okay? 
what is there in selling a product? One more question to you. How many of you have actually tried to sell anything in your life? Wow, you should come to front bench. I'm happy to see at least two, three. What did you sell, madam? Good. But go buy some books at 30%, 20% discount and sell it at 10% profit. You will understand how difficult it is to sell something. OK? It's actually the other way around. What we do in our labs is not even worth 10%. OK? It's a real effort is in converting that idea into a business and making money out of that. Someone paying a check on your, putting a check on your table to actually buy your product because he or she feels that is create some value. Obviously, they'll put a check only when the value is, let's say, much more than what they're paying for it. It's not even that much. If you actually put the numbers, and we have looked at the numbers, okay, it's actually sometimes 10 times more. I mean, you can build a POC for 20,000, 30,000 rupees, but building a prototype, few lakhs of rupees, millions of rupees, and a business scaling up, crores of rupees. Putting actually factory, hiring people, doing marketing, putting advertisements, cost a crores of rupees. What is at the bottom is called as TRL. I don't know how many of you have heard about it. Technology readiness levels. How ready your technology is for commercialization. So obviously something is wrong. And obviously we are not building enough innovative products. Obviously the world is not looking at India to buy products from us. We are still shipping raw iron and uh, agricultural produce to the world. Okay? And they sell us back high, high end stuff, which is not right. We have to add value to the whole thing. So somewhere we have to start off. The question is, where should we start? And you can pick and put a stone and throw a stone and say, OK, maybe we should start from Agritech. Maybe we start from you know, e-transport is coming now, right? We want to have everything, electric vehicles, something like that. So e-mobility, maybe, OK? Or waste management, clean energy, water resources, you name it. You know, as you say, India has every problem that the world faces. So you can pick any problem and try to solve it. I want to argue with you in the next few minutes that healthcare is a good place to start. Okay, and I'll give my arguments, and you can fight with me if you want, and we will we'll see. Okay? The reason why I'm saying is, I'll give five reasons for that. Okay? Reason number one is that healthcare is universal need. Everyone has a human body. Everyone has, will face some health issue at some time or other. In fact, if you look at uh, UN, United Nations, they have talked about sustainable development goals. Have you heard about SDGs? Okay? Out of SDGs, Number three is healthcare. If you look at carefully, number nine is industry, innovation, and number 15 is life on land. So these three out of 17, out, three out of 17 SDGs are to do with healthcare innovation. That is reason enough for me. But if you look at other reasons, if you go back to WHO, there are 14,000 different diseases that you can possibly face. And all these diseases need screening and diagnosis and monitoring and treatment and surgical devices and, and your rehabilitation, assistive devices and so on. So you need to build all those things. And if you look at the market today, uh, the new statistics have just come in a few days back. Um, Indian medical device market is now almost touching 50,000 crores per year, remember that. Okay? Out of that, we are importing 80% of it. Now, that doesn't sound too bad unless you look at the per capita expenditure. Our per capita expenditure is hardly $70 per head per year, whereas USA is $7,500 per head per year. What it means that even if you buy a device from USA and give 90% discount, it is still 10 times more expensive or more affordable than what an average Indian can afford. Does it mean anything to you or you are just sitting there? <laughs> Do you really think we can, and Trump keeps on saying that you are increasing tariffs. Okay? What do we do? We need the devices in the country. We are paying 100 times more than what our common man can afford. No Ayushman can ever match the kind of cost that these people are charging. Some of them make 95% profits in healthcare. Come on. Okay? Uh, so this is something we need to do. Absolutely. They won't, if you want, if something goes wrong and you want to fix it, they will ask you for a hand and leg. <laughs> it's absolutely atrocious. Okay, there's something we have to do about it. Reason number two is that, uh, fortunately, we can think about doing something about it because there are a lot of new technological opportunities which are coming now. You look at robotics, you look at medical imaging, you look at sensors, you look at IoT, Internet of Things. 
or AI, ML, DL, all of you know full forms of that I suppose, right? Machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence and so on. These things are potentially game changers. Potentially we can now reinvent, reimagine, reinvent the devices for our requirements, our affordability, make them more suitable and so on. So reason number three is simply that, is that we can make a difference, okay? And if you go to doctors, if you go, care to go to hospitals and doctors and talk to them, they will tell you that, no, this device is okay, imported, but yet we still want something better, something more safer, something more easily adaptable to our surgeon's requirement or patient's requirement. And of course, the four A's, affordable, adaptable, available and accessible. They have meanings for that. If you just go on the Google, they have specific meaning in healthcare domain. Available when you need it, accessible by all kinds of people in all kinds of areas and so on. So there is a lot of opportunity to think about applying technology for reinventing healthcare so you can meet all these requirements. Reason number three also is about social impact in terms of affordable healthcare. Okay? And when you say affordable healthcare, I just want to go down into that. Cost per device or cost per treatment, if you look at it. Okay? You can actually think about bringing down substantially. We are now looking at a possibility that it's possible to reinvent things so that in India, the cost per treatment, cost of patient can be almost 120th, 150th of what the global devices are. It's possible to do that. Okay? So you look at all those things. Uh, but also you look at uh, the other social impact in terms of if you help a patient get treatment earlier or get a rehabilitation, he is no longer a, a burden on the family. He can go back to job, retain his job. And healthcare innovation can create a lot of jobs. In fact, as per some statistics, uh, healthcare industry or healthcare in general is already the number one employer in USA. In India, already in terms of startups and other growth, healthcare has already become number two after information technology. So healthcare is on a very big upswing in all over the world and especially in India too. Okay? So if you look at affordable health and look at the various costs, that is where we can start looking at it individually. What is the cost of development? What is the cost of testing? What is the cost of marketing, distribution? Various things. If you can look at each one of them, one of them, and hammer them, we can get to that point. Okay? Now, reason number four is that at this point of time, there is a very good funding available from Government of India. I just looked, talked about just one agency there called BIRAC. Biotechnology, I think Industry Research and Assistance Council, something like that. It is an arm of DBT, Department of Biotechnology, which is an arm of Ministry of Science and Technology. And as you know, uh, Nirmala Sitaraman has now put a lot of money for academia teaching as well as for research. They're trying to bring the all research under one umbrella. Okay? So these are all the schemes. Okay? For example, you somewhere you see BIG. BIG stands for Biotechnology Ignition Grant. 50 lakh rupees. Okay? You just make a proposal, proposal hardly four page proposal, five page proposals. And you promise that you will develop a device and take it to the market. 50 lakhs is there for you. It's just one of the schemes. BIPP, SBRI, they're all, they only one crore, two crore, three crore rupees. Okay? But you have to promise that you are going to take a device to the market. This is not for research. Okay? These are all for product development and commercialization. So you can start, the money can go directly to startup. BIG money, the check can be written in the name of the startup company that you or your students want to start. It's possible to do that. The reason number four also is that uh, if you look at now, there are a lot of ecosystem being built. BIRAC has uh, six regional partners. You can see the names. SIGN IIT Bombay has recently become a BIG partner also, which means that SIGN can process the applications, mentor you on how to make a good application, presentation, defend the proposal, and so on. That's possible. We also have 20, um, sorry, 40 bio incubators in the country, different institutions all over the country where there is an incubator where people can come and work on medical devices. Atal incubation centers, the number is never, I mean, this number is just coming up like anything. And uh, good money for creating, again, center for prototyping and so on. You know, some pictures of the various places. Reason number five, actually, I saved the best one for the last, is collaboration. Today, you take bio plus all the fields that you are in this room, mechanical or materials or IT or computing or all other things which you can see here. In fact, all the new research is happening at the intersections of classical disciplines. Biology and physics, biophysics is where you have the new action happening. Research, development, and of course, new products and technologies coming up. So there's a reason to go out of your comfort zone 
and do something. The other reason why I say, and if you see biotechnology itself has multiple colors. Your green biotechnology means your marine, your blue biotechnology, sorry, blue is marine, green means agri, yellow means uh, uh, is food and so on and so forth. So biotechnology itself has multiple colors here. Okay. So all this means there are a lot of opportunities to think about research and development. But then the question comes, why are we not doing that? Okay. If you look classically and if you actually create a, let us say, axis, let us say knowledge creation, uh, creation axis, transfer axis, knowledge axis and product axis, I can get four quadrants. Okay. Knowledge creation is research, knowledge transfer is teaching, product creation is development, product transfer is business. Is it clear? Make sense to you? Okay. And I can take examples of that. So you can say that a scientist is one who does research and let's say engineer who does um, development and then your mentor or teacher and then entrepreneur who does business. The issue is that they don't talk to each other. <laughs> okay? They're all in their comfortable worlds. Okay? They never get together and we kind of joke that maybe that's because we still think that Saraswati and Lakshmi should not coexist. We have been brainwashed. Professors should be poor. <laughs> Businessmen should have Mercedes and Audi cars. If professors go in an Audi car and a businessman goes in an old Maruti car, then something wrong with both of them. Okay, this whole thing which has been drilled into our heads until we kind of overcome that and create tech, start creating technologies which can be commercialized in academic institutions, but that is where you have the new ideas and the young people. Business people are not necessary, they are already constrained, they are already running a very, very difficult game. They don't have the time or energy or the CPU to create new ideas and change them all the way. But academia and industry have to join hands in some way. And joining hands is not easy, so I put the Durga in the middle. <laughs> you have to bring them together, it needs a lot of force. One more formula I will give you now as teachers, which I fortunately discovered very early in my career and has been very good for me. We all are in comfort zones. Okay? And then if you, if you see your, um, there are faculty who say, I love teaching, don't let me do research. There are some new faculty who come and say, I love research, don't ask me to teach. Some people who want to be in society all the time, go to villages and look at them, their problems, but they are not able to research or teaching properly. So there is a bit of a problem that everyone is in their own comfort zones. So we need to somehow bring them together, that is my point I am trying to make. But like Abhimanyu's Chakravyu, there is only one starting point. The starting point is real world. You cannot sit in your classroom or office or laboratory and say, I will change the world. It is not the way to do things. You have to go out of your comfort zone of your office or classroom or lab, go to real world and see what is happening there. Real world means anything, it could be a factory or it could be a farm, it could be a hospital, it could be a hotel. Okay. Go and see the real world like a video camera. Watch what is happening, watch carefully, look at the issues, look at the problems that are being faced. Everywhere problems are there if you look carefully enough. So this one was, uh, these are all pictures of surgeries attended by me or my associates, my students and my associates. I will take the first picture. Okay. There is some, just to prove that I was there in the room. Okay. Can you make the difference between the first and the second picture or first pair and the second pair? Can you see any difference? Okay. Uh, what about my photo? Can you guess the, the year? Which year? Now you can see me and you can see my photo and not the difference. This was 2003, my first surgery I attended in my life. Okay. And the other one was yesterday, whole day I was in Hinduja hospital. Okay. And uh, both surgeries were like five to six hours long. And both surgeries were for people who had what is called, I'll show you the next slide. Okay. Um, I think uh, one more slide will come up, I'll show you. Both were for people who had osteosarcoma. Osteo means bone, sarcoma means cancer. Bone cancer around knee joint. And when that happens, and it's a huge, like around the knee joint, you have a huge ball, which is like this big. Okay? And uh, most of the time, they just amputate the leg. But this happens mostly to growing children, which is, you're talking about the average age is about 11 years to 20 years. So you don't want to amputate leg of a person whose life is just starting. Okay. So there is a technology by which you can open the leg, remove the entire knee joint along with part of the tibia and the femur bone, which is the thigh bone and the shin bone, and replace that with what is called as a mega prosthesis. 
It provides a knee functional joint, part of the tibia and part of the femur and tibia bones also. Mega processes. It costs 5 lakh rupees. Subsidized cost in India by this USA company is 5 lakh rupees. What we could do for about one fourth the cost of that. And this is not even, not even mass produced. If we do mass production, I think we can bring the cost down. And 1.2 lakh is the cost of the what's called as the arthritic knee joint, which is just the surfacing, which is what old people need when they, the knees wear out. Okay? So a little bit more of the story. So the, over a period of time, so that took us like 15 years of development time. 2003, 4, I attended the first surgery. We got the first project. It took us two, three, five years to get the project going. 2007, Jan, we got the money. And now 2019, we got the first three patients surgery done. Yesterday was the third surgery. 12 years. You heard? Ki Rakshas ne tapasya kiya, gara saal, bara saal. 12 years of tapasya for this. Okay? So we built all kinds of joints. Initially, we would give it to doctor and say, no, no, not good. But then I switched to CAD CAM. We taught the doctors how to look at CAD. We started building 3D printed. Remember, 3D printing in 2006 is not easy. We're talking about 2019, right? 15 years back. Then we did all kinds of simulation. We showed the doctor, okay, we'll create a new kind of a joint, which is better than the imported joint. The imported joint has a free movement. Patients are very uncomfortable walking for the first few weeks. Our joint patients can start walking on day number two. Okay, because it gives a very nice constrained motion like the natural knee joint, human joint. We did FEA testing, we did machine testing, static, photoelasticity. We, we built walking machines. Okay, walking machines. Before you put a joint in the human body, you want to put a joint on a machine. Okay, what you see is kind of a red, that is a joint. So you walk the joint for millions of cycles. The machine would break down. You know, about millions of cycles. Five million cycles is a prescribed five lakhs number of times. And each one day, it takes you two seconds, it takes you months to test the design. And if that design fails, you have to go back to drawing board and build another design again. It's a very long and tough journey. Okay? The machine started failing. So we built new machines which are more strong, more uh, you know, can abusive loads and things like that. We have to build the surgical instruments. The surgery has to be done properly, right? Joint may be great, but if surgery is wrong, then you have, the whole thing fails. So how do you make a perfect cut on the tibia bone? That bump, bulb is like the tumor. Okay, how do you make the perfect cut on the tibia bone and femur bone? And by the way, we got the first patent granted for the instrument recently. In, in India, patent granting takes seven, eight years. We filed in 2010 and we got recently the patent for that. And of course, the whole thing is in a modular sizes. The thing is that tumor doesn't come in standard shape, shape and size. So you need to, you cannot make a new device for every patient because every patient is different. So what we do is we create the joint in multiple modules and modules come in small, medium, large or let's say stems are in let's say 10 diameter, 12 diameter, 40 millimeter diameter. You can mix and match the components to fit including there are spacers in between. You can increase the length of that, reduce the length of that. You can mix, thousands of combinations are possible. We can more or less match every patient. Okay, and then the software was built to plan the surgery in three dimensions. So you know you are going to make the perfect cut and implement the virtual cut onto the physical patient. Okay. So you may have some, after this will be some pictures which are going to be actual surgery. So if you are not very happy, you can close your eyes, but this is okay. This video shows you the actual joint. You can see that it is mirror finish. Okay. And uh, it is closer to human movement because human knee also not only goes like that, but also there's slight turning rotation movement into that. And that's essential. We build the whole manufacturing system in Hyderabad uh, at NFTDC. And there we have CNC machines, robotic machines, polishing machines, your hydroxy appetite coating machines. All these are necessary to make sure the joint nicely merges with the bone. Okay, uh, and the materials have to be high-end material. This is a uh, it's a high poly high density polythene, where the bone goes into bone that is titanium alloy, where you are rubbing at each other that is cobalt chromium molybdenum alloy. So it's multiple. They're all high-end alloys, very difficult to manage, very difficult to machine, and so on. Okay, so that is one, and uh, that now your pictures of surgery. So this is the actual patient, the first patient that happened just uh, a few weeks back. So the whole bulbular thing which you see, uh, let's see if it works. This whole thing is is tumor. This is your uh, this is your thigh, this is your knee joint, this is your uh, shin bone or tibia bone. That is your knee joint here. That is how the natural should should be. But then this whole thing is cancer. So what normally would do is they will amputate the leg here. 
Now what you're doing is not amputating. We are opening the leg. Now surgery pictures there. This is a, this is a, the the fe, uh, the femur end called condyle. This whole thing is tumor. Okay. So you open the leg, cut it out. In fact, cut out this whole portion and then replace the whole thing with. You are using the instruments, our instruments to make a cut, perfect flat cut. Otherwise, the patient will not walk straight. And then finally, you implant it into the the, the gap. Head is on this side, leg is on this side. This is a knee joint. So this whole thing has been built, and then there's something inside here also. So reconstructing the entire knee joint, plus part of the bones also. If this goes into the bone, there's a stem here which is inserted into the bone, put some bone cement, and it adheres very nicely there. Okay, and uh, look at the effect of that. Entire thing now replaced with your knee. There's no more natural knee joint. It's a mechanical knee joint. And look at how naturally he's walking. You'd actually figure out which leg was the surgery done. See if you can make out which leg. Yeah. Okay. So you are giving back their life. Go back to natural life. Tell me which car you can buy and they guarantee the car will run for your life. This is a mechanical joint after all. And it is inside corrosive body fluids. Okay. So we have tested the joint for um, 20 crore cycles which is equivalent to 20 years in some sense. 1 million cycle, sorry, 2 crores, not 20, 20 million. So typically 1 million uh, number of times is what you move your leg, normal walking people, right? So it is now tested for 20 years in some sense. But, but we don't know, 20 years for, it'll, the fatigue and wear and all those things. But inside body fluids, we don't, never know. And hey, some kid, if especially many of them are patients are kids, they'll forget they have a knee joint and they'll jump. We all have jumped in our life. Amrut only gaya, niche jump kiya, to bhul jayega, to mushkil hone wala. Okay. So, but then at least uh, we have saved his leg. The worst come worst, we can open the leg and put another joint once again. And by the time maybe the joints will become, in 20 years maybe they will become much better. Good question. If the question had not asked, the class is failed. <laughs> Okay, so kids will grow obviously. So, and so there are now new technologies where you can, instead of opening the entire leg and changing the whole thing again, you can now make um, one of the pieces in this. If you notice here, it's a spacer. Otherwise, it's only additional optional piece. What we can do is this spacer can be made into a high-tech thing, where there is a inside is a warm gear. Maybe the two spacers, warm gear, and then when you put a screw from outside, just a small hole and put a screw, that will open up and it can build up. It's possible to do that. But of course there's a limit. Maybe you can limit, increase by one inch, whatever. So beyond one inch growth again you have to obviously change the joint. There are also some joints where the, the thing inside has a magnetic ring. So instead of putting a screw again and that's a small surgery but surgery, you can put the leg in a magnetic coil, switch on the coil and then the warm gear will rotate. There's a motor there inside the body which gets magnetized and so it rotates by itself. Okay, And then you can lengthen it. One millimeter after about thousand rotations. So the technologies are there, but those joints cost like 25 lakh rupees. So obviously we need to work on that also. So there are three, three what I said, investigators. <laughs> so Dr. Bala, who is the director of the NFTDC Hyderabad, it's some kind of semi-government organization, you can say. He's a material scientist, and then Dr. Manish Agarwal at Hinduja Hospital perhaps the best ortho-oncologist in the country today, or one of the best person in the country. So we three got together to do this project. I told you, 15 years it has taken us. Now we come to Betik. Sure. Sure. So uh, 2004, I saw the surgery in Tata Memorial. At that point, he was in Tata Memorial Hospital. So after that, for two years, we used our own money, our own time, weekends we used to meet and whatever 3D printing I used to do. We spent several, I would say, almost a lakh rupee each just to do the project because of the sheer, um, you know, uh, love of doing the whole thing. Then we went to DST and DBT, Department of Science and Technology and Department of Biotechnology. DST said it's a health medical problem, go to Department of Biotechnology. Department of Biotechnology thought that we are talking about all CAD CAM and materials and manufacturing, they said go to Department of Science and Technology. So this happened for two years, so we gave up. 
And then there's an actually long story because it's like 22 episodes. If I tell you, it takes one hour. But end of that uh, 19th episode or 18th episode, we happen to meet the principal scientific advisor to the government of India, Dr. R. Chidambaram. At that point, now it is Dr. Vijay Raghavan. So 2005, uh, 2006, uh, early we met him. He called a brainstorming meeting eventually. And eventually we again went back and met him. Incidentally, that day also there was a cricket match going on, I remember that. And um, so he asked, uh, uh, so how much money? Can I, can I, okay, so the problem is there that both DBT and DSC are not funding. It's something which is sitting in between the two ministries. So how much money do you need? And let me tell you, we had gone to DST with about 25 lakh rupee budget and to DBT for about something similar, 30, 32 lakh budget. So the question is that when Dr. Chidambaram asked us, so how much money do you need? And we know that both the project proposals did not go through. My question to you is, how much do you think I should have asked him? Give a number. Anyone? 50 lakh. 50 lakh. Let me see any other realistic numbers. Let me see how, who, who, is so, how, who is closest to the final number, which I'll tell you in a minute anyway. Let's get some more guesses. No, I, I need a number, so I'll tell you my number and your number will be close to that, then I'll give you a chocolate. I'll buy a chocolate and give you. Five lakh, okay, some more. 30, okay. 10, okay. 15. You know, by the end of my talk, I'll make a statement and you will understand what the statement is. Uh, I will not tell that now. But I think something magical happened. And uh, before I could think of what to tell, my mouth already said something. Because we Indians are very, we sometimes speak without thinking. So I spoke without thinking. It is like a, before you finish sentence, I just, you know, like reaction kind of a sentence. I said, sir, what is the limit? And he said, under my signature, five crores. If you want more than that, I have to go to cabinet, but I can't guarantee when they will meet and when they'll approve that. I said, so he said, can you give a proposal to me? And his secretary already had told us that he may ask you some question like that to keep a proposal ready. And I had kept a proposal ready with the kind of numbers that you were talking about. And when he said, is the proposal ready? I said, sir, can I have some more time? <laughs> I went back and changed the numbers, added zero everywhere. And we actually took 4.9 crores from the project, phase one. Then it was so happy they were that they said, why don't you do phase two? So phase one only about developing the project, the product. Then they said, why don't you actually put it into patients? Go recruit doctors, go to make the instruments in large numbers, make 100, 150, and then give it to all patients. Then they said, more money. They said, no problem. This is a national project. We got 15 crores more after that. So this is a 20, 25 crore project. So NFTDC also put in money from their side. One device, 15 years, 25 crores. That's the kind of budget you need for medical devices. Okay. So thank you for asking the question. But this story actually is a long story. Uh, those who are interested to know some more episodes, not all episodes are there on the net. On YouTube, you can go and say TED Med, TED, which is TED Talks, if you have heard about. Yes. So TED and MED, TED Med, and you can put my name and you will get to see one Ted, Ted Med talk where I talk about maybe eight, nine episodes. How we met him and how what happened and things like that. That is one story. So now let's switch to story number two. Is that um, what we did was um, the government of Maharashtra came to us in 2011 or 12. <coughs> Remember this orthocare project ran from 2007 to 2010 was the first phase. And then second phase was starting in about 2012 and it's just kind of going on. No, it started a little later. So orthocare project was so difficult for me that I am not a me medical person. I don't know if you all seen my resume. I'm a mechanical guy, design person, got into manufacturing, metal casting, and I developed software. My heart and soul is simulation software for metal casting. That is my core, core area. And that's where I spent 25 years of my life. I actually built products which are selling in the market, okay? And recently someone was introducing me in some meeting. And uh, so obviously third person introduced me saying he's B. Ravi from IIT Bombay. The other person who I never met and seems to be a good person, he said, oh, Betik Ravi? I said, what? 
ओके आई कम टू बेटिक ना ऐसे पच्चीस साल मैंने मेटल कैसे में काम किया कोई पूछता नहीं है फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ दिस लैब विच इज कॉल्ड बेटिक ओके आई एम रिकोगनाइज विद दैट सो आई फेल्ड एक्चुअली वेरी अनहैप्पी मेडिकल इज नॉट माई फील्ड एट ऑल ओके माई फील्ड इज मैकेनिकल एंड मेटल कैस्टिंग एंड सॉफ्टवेयर कैड कैम कैन से बट वॉट हैपन इज दैट इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन ट्वेल्व डॉट काकोड़कर अनिल काकोड़कर इफ यू रिकोगनाइज हिम एज अ पोखरान टू साइंटिस्ट ही वॉज ऑल्सो द चेयरमैन ऑफ द बी ओ जी ऑफ आई आई टी बॉम्बे सो ही सेड दैट वाई डोंट वी एंड ही हैड नोन अबाउट ऑर्थ कैड प्रोजेक्ट सो ही सेड यू हैव बिल्ट वन प्रोडक्ट इन फाइव ईयर्स टाइम दैट्स टू लॉन्ग फॉर ए कंट्री लाइक इंडिया वाई एंड पुट ए सिस्टम टूगेदर सो दे कैन बिल्ड फाइव प्रोडक्ट्स पर ईयर इन ए पाइप लाइन ऑफ कोर्स आई सर रियली सो दैट इज हाउ बेटिक वॉज बॉर्न एंड दैट्स अ हम्बल शेड यू कैन वॉक थ्रू द कैंपस एंड यू कैन सी दिस एंड वी स्टार्ट विद अ वेरी सिंपल कॉन्सेप्ट एंड नाउ यू नो माई रीजन नंबर फाइव वाई हेल्थ केयर इनोवेशन आई मैंशन टू समाइम बैक आई जस्ट सेट दिस प्लेस विल बी प्लेस वी आर जस्ट वी विल गेट पीपल टू टॉक टू इच अदर दैट्स ऑल आई डू आई गेट डॉक्टर्स आई गेट रिसर्चर्स I'll get entrepreneurs, and now we're getting investors also. Initially, investors was not there, but now investors are coming in large numbers, significant numbers. Doctors, on average, we get at least two doctors per week, who come new doctors. They come and say, "We heard about it. Here is a nice problem. Why don't you solve it for us?" I don't have enough people and enough time and enough resources to do that. We have like 300 problems worth solving, projects worth solving. So if you step inside Betik, we get to see a few labs. you have a virtual prototyping or cad cam lab you have a plastics 3d printing lab you have a electronics prototyping lab again i don't know anything about electronics but i have a pcb design pcb milling pcb testing machine and all those things uh, obviously run by people who know these things i don't know anything about electronics and then we have a metal 3d printing where you can actually build a titanium implant on this machine directly and put in the human body because titanium is biocompatible we also have a network of betik Betik is also first three Betik centers happened in Bombay, then NIT Nagpur, and the third one in College of Engineering Pune. It's a government of Maharashtra initiative, and uh, so they also have similar facilities. We also have a gate lab where your camera is inside the room, and as you walk, I can create a stick profile of the human body, saying these are the forces and movements, and from that you can calculate a lot of things about disorders, walking disorders, even neurological disorders. have a signature in the way you walk so all that can be done in that place now i'll talk about how we actually are creating this pipeline okay our pipeline starts with meda which is stands for medical device hackathon it is a two day event starts on saturday morning ends on sunday evening i never said in between anything people work continuously we give them couple of hours break on sunday morning for washing up and coming back what happens in meda is that all the doctors who come to me all the time i tell them wait we will float your problem in meda and you have a lot of people who write to me all the time saying i want to work with you literally including pdf some abroad are saying we want to come and work with you so i say come to meda okay and a lot of institutes want to start medical innovation centers i tell them organize a meda so problems potential problems worth solving potential champions who want to become innovators and institutes who want to start up thing we all bring them together in meda the first meda is going to happen this weekend in haskin institute in mumbai itself this year's meda meda happens in july the second one is going to happen in pune in venture center those who are from pune can come and see the third one is going to happen in nagpur in uh, rai soni college of engineering so those who want to come and see the thing it is a wonderful thing to see okay those who win the meda we bring them to medic medic is medical device innovation camp it runs for four day five days and four nights continuous we give two to three hours every day to just if you want to take one hour rest and one hour of washroom that's about it okay those who still stand on their feet at the end of five days and make a presentation about a new solution to a problem that is given on day one they are brought into betik on a one year fellowship and one year the mandate is you have to get the product into a medical device exhibition called medex put the device in exhibition so the public and doctors and potential partners from industry or investors can see that and you know that people want it then you start a company in sign we want startup companies to make money in year 
not develop, start a company and then struggle, struggle, struggle for five years. By the time you finish all these things, you are ready for business. So from bedside, which means a hospital bedside where you see a new problem, to engineering bench, to business incubation or license to industry, to back to bedside solution in three years for a low end device. I'm not saying high tech CT scanning machine, but let's say a new stethoscope or a new thermometer or a new surgical instrument. It's possible to do it in three years time and we have done it. So here are pictures of those uh, mega hackathons. We have done eight hackathons. We don't do it in IIT Bombay. We always do it in a new institute which wants to start a medical innovation center. And then we have done uh, four medhas, a uh, medic, which is a five day, four night camp that we want to more and more and more do it in IIT Bombay because the whole thing is under control. We can do it in a very good uh, controlled way. This year's medic is going to happen from 28 September to 2nd October, five day, four night. Those of you who are really committed to innovation, incubation, guiding good student projects which make a difference to society, you can apply for this. Okay. I can't guarantee selection because there are 60 seats for the medic and every seat is precious for us. So we want to only want to pick those who will make a difference to India. That's it. And you have to prove that you can make a difference to India by what you have done in the past. Okay. You can apply for that. Actually. Absolutely. All these are by, they are not by registration. You can't just register and be guaranteed a seat. Yeah, you can always apply for that. Announcement for uh, medic is not yet on. It will happen by end of July. Uh, August is when the applications will be evaluated. End of sept September 28th is the event, remember that, to 2nd October. No, actually, what I was uh, inquiring that, is it a group of uh, students or a group of students in the Medha? Good, so let me answer that. So the Medha, which is a two-day event, the Medha, which is a two-day event, it is primarily meant for students. Um, essentially, even third year to fourth year going, so July is like when they're entering final year, those students, because by Medha, in the two days, they can get some nice idea for their own project. Is that only for engineering students? No. So let me uh, add that. As, as usual, you have to wait for 30 seconds, you will get the answer anyway. <laughs> but I will tell you. So in Medha, we have 40 seats, 10 seats for doctors, 10 seats for designers, 10 for mechanical, 10 for electronics. But let me expand. When I say 10 doctors, I mean anyone who knows human anatomy. So. MBBS students, dental students, physiotherapy students, biomedical students, everyone who knows human anatomy, they are counted as doctors. Ten designers, designers means what? Industrial designers, product designers, graphic designers, architects, anyone who has creativity, visualization, ability for that. Even painters, artists are fine. Ten mechanical, but mechanical means mechanical, materials, metallurgy, production, all those things. And when I say electronics, I mean electrical, electronics, computer science, IT, all those things. But every team must have each of these four. That is your medha. The medic is a five day event and four night event. There also the four formula applies. But now we don't have students. Medic is primarily for working professionals. People who are already working in a company, in a job. It could be a normal manufacturing company. It could be Mahindra and Mahindra. It could be an IT company, HCL or Infosys. But someone who is, has a kida in the head that I'm not happy with my job. I want to do something more with my life. And I want to try healthcare. I, he's, maybe his parents are doctors, but he went into engineering. But he wants to try medicine at least for five days. So that medic is meant for people who have doctors who want to be engineers, engineers who want to be doctors, incubation center heads, teachers who are guiding medical projects. So if you want to qualify, you better have a medical project, at least few projects being guided already, or your colleagues. Okay. Um, then, um, um, yeah, so teachers, incubation managers, doctors, engineers, working professionals, pretty much anyone. We also can allow PhD students who are already working on a medical project or a master's students working on a medical project already. And they can come and he or she can come and attend. Uh, B.Tech students we normally we don't allow because I told you these 60 seats are very precious. We want them to make a difference. I don't want students to come here and tomorrow ask me, sir, can you give a record for going to USA? Sorry. This event is not meant for getting a certificate in record for us. Yeah. Students are allowed in Medha. Medha even teachers are allowed because that college who is organizing or co-organizing, those teachers can become either come as a mentor or as a participant, no problems. I had beautiful people in attending Medha. I had examples of vice chancellor. One vice chancellor, I will not name him here. He wrote to me and I wrote to him saying that you can nominate your teachers for the medic event. 
So he wrote saying, okay, I'm nominating so and so to people. They said, they says, can I also be part of the event in some way? I said, Vice Chancellor, you can come for inauguration or come for prize distribution. What more can I say? Hai kini, right? He said, okay, I'll come for inauguration. I said, yeah, come. I put him on the dais along with other VVIPs and inauguration ho gaya. Then he had to go back. Then he said, uh, end of the day, he said, sir, it's too interesting. I'll cancel my ticket and rebook. I'll go after two days. I said, okay, stay back. So he actually stayed back. He became part of the whole thing, started walking with the people, interviewing people and so on. After two days, he says, this is too interesting. I have to see the finishing touch. So I'll cancel my whole thing. And he stayed all the five days there. I've had senior doctors, doctors who are in their 60s, I write to him saying that, can you come as jury members on the final day for evaluating the, the presentations? They said, can I become a participant? I said, sure, you are in the 63 year old head of a surgery department. We want a participant. Not only that, they said, I, we want to stay in a hostel. We want to eat the same food. I said, can you sure night and day it will happen? No problem, we'll do night and day. And they would always go last, like 5 a.m. and come first by 8.30 a.m. So, this, is, this event is not for ordinary people. <laughs> but also we say that this event is for people who have something in them and we can change your DNA in five days. That after five days, life is not same for you and also people around you. But let me show you actual stories of what happened. So these are the people who have come to me after those medics. The people here who have resigned from their jobs, beautiful corporate jobs, and join and they're taking things. So I want to tell a few stories about them. Before that, let me give you a very quick thing about what they do in the one year. The one year fellowship which we give them, it is divided into four into three, sorry, four into four, 16 steps. Typically each step is about three to four weeks. There's no rigid rule, but roughly you can say each step is about three to four weeks. So the first three months, they're supposed to go to hospitals and watch what is happening there and define a problem and create the initial concept solution. The next three, four months, do the normal engineering stuff, design, prototyping, analysis, prototyping, and so on. The next three steps, figure out the manufacturing process, test the device in the lab, and go and test the device in the hospitals also. And then final three, four months, file your complete patent specifications. We do the initial patent in the first step itself, but final specifications, and then um, create a business model, and then finally you, you your, uh, get some funds to scale up. Typically, we give them this BIG award, 50 lakh award, we apply at this stage. And that money is used to start a company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all those things, all those things are done. But remember, if it's a uh, non-notified device, and if you go into details, I can tell you answers to that. Uh, some devices do not need permission. They only need a NOC from government. Like something which doesn't go inside human body. Not the knee joint which I showed you. That is a long journey. You have what's called a class A device. Class A devices are like thermometers and um, some stethoscopes and things like that which don't go inside human body. That is what I'm talking about here. Screening device, diagnosis device and all that. The moment it's a surgical instrument, it goes into class two and then implants goes into class three and four. That is very long journey. So I'm not getting into that too much. So we have a list of 300 problems from about 100 doctors, 150 doctors from about 80, 90 hospitals. List of problems worth solving. We have taken 120 of them, selected that saying that, okay, which problem has innovation potential and, and whatever, uh, worth doing and large market size and all that. And 120 problems given to the hackathons and the camps. Out of that, we picked up 50 people who worked in these labs. Those 50 people have filed 50 patents and 50 products are developed. Out of 50 products, 20 products have been actually been licensed or in the process of licensing to startups or industry. All in last four years, four and a half years. So I'll tell you some stories quickly. The first story was a, um, the only one with software, all others are actually hardware, where the doctor said that, can you create a 3D model from an X-ray? Now you're all mechanical guys, you will laugh at me. They'll say, you, from a front view and side view, can you create a 3D view? Not possible for a complex shape, right? And then the doctor laughs back and says that, if I can imagine in my head the 3D shape, why can't I write an artificial intelligence program to create a 3D shape from a 2D X-ray? That is how this project started, three, three to three and a half years of PhD work. And finally, we created a software 
which is called as tab plan or you can go to google and say x-ray to 3d you just say google x-ray to 3d and you can x-ray image you can upload and you can download a 3d model of the anatomy right now they have done it for the knee joint they are now doing for hip joint and pelvic joint and other uh, other human body segment they are doing that and this guy finally did a software and the software is for surgical planning using x-ray only not ct scanning ct scanning is 100 times more radiation dose so you don't want to do ct scanning and expensive so you don't want to do that and uh, he has of course with uh, he got a lot of awards including the big award iipme iigp india innovation growth program gold medal and all those things he was in rashtrapati bhavan with um, various uh, uh, ministers and even there's a modi ji had a meeting with him and there's a mime mime no mean what do you call this mean kya bolte hain mean saying you are here, here in 2d or 3d you know <laughs> okay story number 2 is uh, three people here tapas adarsha and uh, dr nambiraj nambiraj from a rural hospital uh, tapas from a semiconductor farm in hyderabad and uh, adarsha from a lnt bombay all working happily in their jobs they got together first time in the medic 2015 the five day four night thing okay and the doctor says that i have problem that when there's a patient comes to me and i put a stethoscope on the chest and i hear some funny sound that i have never heard before i do not know whether it is emergency case or not i want to get a second opinion i want to beam the sound send the sound to someone else my friend in pune so he can listen to the sound and tell me whether it is emergency or not can you transmit the sound of stethoscope to a remote, <coughs> to a remote doctor was the po- question posed by him so over 3 days and 4 nights they build the proof of concept which looks like that they actually like a hall like this same room something similar room they put a stethoscope no wires and then the loud speakers they could hear the heartbeat okay so event is over then they go back to their respective companies this was september right so november december i get start get a phone calls saying sir can we take the project further in iit bombay i am waiting for the phone call <laughs> of course <laughs> so i say aa jao so they both resigned from the jobs and early 2015 they uh, 16 they joined the moment they joined i got them contacts in our hospitals that we know and within a year they developed the product uh, and then they got this big grant of 50 lakh rupees which we started a company called ayu devices in sign iit bombay you can visit them if you want you can just drop in and then uh, this is how the stethoscope looks like normal stethoscope you just put the model in between and then it becomes a digital stethoscope you can in- increase sound cancel noise you can record the sound on a mobile phone visualize the sound onto that send it to someone else to bluetooth and wifi and all those things and now they are doing analytics also which means that they'll actually even analyze if your heartbeat or the chest sound is normal or abnormal okay and there are stories like that stories like that so now i think time is running out so i'm going to now just flash the pictures this is a story of a diabetic foot okay diabetes you know india has now 5 to 6 crore diabetes people at least 10% of them will eventually or possibly will have what's called a diabetic foot which requires amputation this news you are not seeing in newspapers it will come at some point of time in big news because more people are dying or sorry amputating <laughs> because of diabetic foot than maybe any other reason okay it will come in newspapers now we want to prevent that by looking at the feet tissue stiffness which is a very nice new measure of the condition and we have doctors working with that we have the initial prototype ready with that the again this got one more big award of 50 lakh rupees and this guy is now build the first prototype which is for home use and is now building one more prototype for the clinical use clinical use means we want to do it very fast home use you have enough time so you can do it slowly and uh, he also had a company called iati devices again it's also incubated in our uh, crescit there are two places within iit where companies are started one is in um, a sign building which is uh, right next door and one is a crescit sit is information technology building uh, next to school of management the third story is about glaucoma night blindness uh, it can happen because of the high intraocular pressure and these people built a device to measure the iop normally you to do that you have to open your eyes put a Uh, anesthesia and they will touch the cornea that is uncomfortable you can't be use screening for that you need a ophthalmologist and anesthesia and and high end equipment for that we said can we not do it on a eyelid 
of course you may think it is be inaccurate but we found good built good signs by which we can eliminate the effect of the eyelid and look at the effect of the cornea and the accuracy of this device is almost the same as a high end device which cost anywhere few lakhs of rupees this can be built for under 10000 rupees cost per patient if you see by looking at the time taken it can be 100 1% of the cost per patient screening using a high end device so i'll i mean what i said in my first few slides it is possible to rethink and reinnovate so you can bring down the cost per treatment to 1% okay again they got a bij award recently they are just starting a company they are looking for a good name for the company right now they are thinking about the name this is problem for babies who have club foot babies born with a feet twisted inward okay and uh, the moment if you notice it immediately it's possible to correct that feet they'll put them into some kind of a brace which you can see there and over a period of few months the feet get corrected because bones are soft kid bones are soft and they can slowly become normal the problem with the current brace was that there was 75% failures in the sense that the the kids correction was not complete in the prescribed amount of time so doctors were thinking something is wrong can you do something to improve the success rate of this these braces so we came into the whole thing we made put a module into the brace which tells the doctor whether they put the brace was put properly or not and for how long and with that data the now the correction is now about 80 90 babies have been uh, fitted with this corrected improved brace and now we have almost uh, not we are now they are saying initial data says 100% success rate all babies with the new brace are now getting fully corrected okay then they have biopsy gun a gun to look at the tissue uh, is malignant or cancerous we have a gun which can be used multiple times compared to the current gun which is we can use only once and the patient cost is very high uh, patient cost is like 5000 rupees with the current gun we can bring it down to 200 rupees with the new gun okay then uh, and this was not a startup but this is a new company in pune they said we would like to license it for you again each one of these has a long story i would love to tell you stories okay but these guys had already decided to look at biopsy gun they almost were going to li uh, license the marketing of a imported gun in the country they said made in india device let's market this itself so they came and we licensed it to them we have another long story about a laparoscopic instrument now we getting in more complex surgical instruments so this instrument can go inside the, the abdomen and can do more complex surgeries that the, the wrist at the end no, normal ones are straight this one has a wrist at the end of the thing so it can make more complex movement inside the abdomen like suturing for example okay and that on a you can test it on a different kind of tissue so we actually do the tests on uh, on of course butcher's butcher's meat okay and before it goes into the actual hospitals and actual surgeries and so on and this also was licensed to a company in india they said we would like to manufacture and sell that and we said you are most welcome uh, this story is about uh, another innovator betik has a center in pune i mentioned to you so one innovator from that picked up a nice problem he said kids fall in school all the time or you have accidents on the road all the time and until you and fracture let us say and until you reach the hospital you have to hold the fracture in place right so how do you keep it you clock put some cloth and i put something on your neck and all those things right he said can i do something which i just dip this thing in water dip it in water put it around the hand and within minutes it will become hard so it will immobilize my limb until i go to hospital this also got a big award he has started a company in pune and we are getting into mass production right now this guy story is even more inspiring <laughs> he is anish karma from uh, buland shahar in up okay he is a polio victim himself and polio victim means that your leg is weak that means when you are walking if you are putting force on the leg you will buckle and fall down so you can't walk naturally so you get what is called as a caliper caliper nothing but a some kind of a you know metal frame around your leg so you can put the load on the leg but then the caliper doesn't bend like a knee joint it's like a rigid caliper or you walk with a stick right so this guy said he got this free caliper from government of india i think 200 rupees something like that he just had to pay a registration fees then he started going to local cycle shops and um, your welding shops and started saying i want to build something which will 
become rigid when you're putting the load on the leg, but the moment you put the lift the leg, it should become, it should bend, swing like a knee joint. Imagine 10th pass, 12th fail. <laughs> the guy is not educated at all. Start going to these shops and start doing that. He got an NRDC award of some two or five lakh rupees, but somehow the money never, money was rooted through an engineering college, which college never made, got the money back to him. He was frustrated, depressed in life. Somehow someone must have given him my phone number. I said, Tum train leke aajao. I'll pay you the train fare. And let me listen to your story in person. That was one year back. Okay, so now last nine, ten months he was in with us. He has now evolved several generations of the of the calipers. He works harder than our MTech students and PTech PhD students, let me tell you that. We discuss that, okay, we'll discuss this tomorrow. By the time tomorrow comes, we're discussing on CAD GAM. This guy already has built it by hand and puts it on the table with a smile on his face. So recently, he got a BIG award also, 50 lakh rupees. Um, it was very difficult for me because he cannot speak English. And in front of people in Delhi, I had to get him to practice. I said, Hindi baat karo, but every sentence put an English word. <laughs> so even if the guy is from Tamil Nadu, <laughs> he will understand every sentence at least. So it was a big challenge for us, but he also got, and he is an inspiration for us, people like me. If he can do it, boy, you and me can do much more in, in our life. In 24 hours, we can do much more. So he is now catch, catches hold of other people in Bombay, goes to Ghatkopar. He sees anyone railway platform, polio guy, he says, come to my lab. I said, Tum kam se mujhe bol ke lab mein leke And he wants to try it out and see how it works and all that. So he is a born entrepreneur. Okay. So let me ask one question. If any time in my life I have two options. Option one, a brilliant qualified engineer who is bored, who doesn't want to do anything. A guy who has no qualification at all, but he wants to change the world. Who should I pick? No, my, my question is that. I got a question, let me answer that. So what I do is, he is just someone who cannot sit still for a moment. He's, he, he goes, he goes to, he went to the, the local um, artificial limb organization in, in somewhere in um, Haji Ali. He didn't ask me permission. He just takes a train, goes there, meets the director and says, Sir, I am working on data chahiye, or I want to see your this thing. I mean, he is sheer, sheer perseverance, sheer initiative. I can't stop him even if I want to. Okay. My problem was, <laughs> my problem was, how do I get him inside IIT? How did you justify it? That is what my question is. <laughs> how did you justify it? Because even if you get as a student, you don't ask, oh, joke, our joke is, okay, you didn't get to JE, okay, gate hai. gates are not coming, PhD, come and come. PhD is not coming, come and 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 come. Abhi, after, six, after six months, I am telling him don't get distracted now, put the device in the market first, start supplying and then you go do whatever you want. I am holding him still because he was getting distracted in between saying, sir, I have to do this. I said, goli will kill you, you will do it. finish karo isko. We are all very easy to distract, we don't want to do that. Okay. So for my problem was, thanks to people like Atre here, okay. IIT is a place where if you are genuinely interested, we can break the rules. So my problem was he is, doesn't have a B.Tech. You need a minimum B.Tech qualification to come as a project assistant or at least diploma to chahiye kam se kam. So I had to go and tell the, our dean r and I think it was Balaji at that point. I said that I need to get, his man, get this man inside IIT in some way. I need to, only you need an ID card otherwise security fellow will stop him every day, right? So we can make exceptions. You have to make exceptions and I can tell you this point. 
I am jealous of some of you who are younger than me. India today, you go to government bureaucrats, they say, okay, can it fit into this policy or that rule? Fine. If it not, they say, okay, we'll make a new rule. If what you're saying makes sense. This India is very different from India of 10 years back. You guys, if you do not make use of this opportunity, it's, you are committing a big sin, I would say that. Okay, let me finish the stories because time is almost running out. So I will not go into more stories. This is again another very inspiring story. Jaipur Lake, I mentioned to you, 5 lakh people have got, but it's a very painful joint. People cannot use it. It's very uncomfortable. We have completely reinvented the way the joint is made. It is now far more comfortable, higher quality, better productivity. You can make twice the number of uh, joints without going too much high tech. It's just appropriate tech is what I want to use. Okay, and we are now making batch production of that. We got a Google award for this, which is three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I think it's about two crores. And using the money, we are setting up a manufacturing plant. Half the money, half the money will go to give some five hundred thousand people free of cost these joints. Okay, and um, this is the first. Uh, so almost one year back, we took this photo, already invalid uh, photo, but uh, you can see the first three D printed uh, knee joint. Sorry, socket for the prosthetic leg which uh, this guy is walking. And this guy itself, the patient is so cooperative. He says, sir, you tell me what you are ready to do. He says, he is the first guy to volunteer saying, the moment you have a new uh, prosthetic process or leg, he wants to be the first one to try it out. And he is willing to come all the way from Daman. He is in Daman to Bombay at his cost. I say, I want to at least pay you travel. He says, no, sir, you are doing good work. I won't want to take money from you. I mean, people like this make your day. So, just to summarize what we have done so far, uh, these are all the devices we have done. All the red ones are the startup companies. We now have, I think, 11 startup companies. And those of you see IIT startup dot dot dot, which means they got the 50 lakh award, but company name is still not decided. I think this week or next week they will get the names. And the blue ones are the Indian companies who have licensed the technology from us. Okay, so I'm just going to flash through some of the slides. So, we do, I showed the pipeline to in the beginning. I said we do this MEDA and MEDIC and then MEDEX exhibitions and then the sign incubation and so on. So these are the exhibitions we have done. I mean, you can see some great people in this, okay. And uh, we have been in newspapers now more than 100, I, we have stopped counting, let us put it that way. Hundreds of mentions in newspapers. But still we are not, we are not overexposing because too much of newspaper also is not good for you. So whenever there is a nice story worth sharing with the public, we put it out with that. And, um, but these are the pictures which make us happy because every picture has a doctor and an engineer and some pictures have a patient also. These are pictures which actually drive us day after day after day. Uh, the stories of what happened, some of the stories which I told you today are already there in a book form called uh, Essence of Medical Device Innovation. I do not think I have enough copies for all of you, but I can leave 5, 10 copies here and you can thumb through that. And just Shakti, if you can just coordinate with me or my lab. Just take five copies and keep, keep them, and you can thumb through that. You have definitely had a few days, I suppose, right? Um, we got famously the signature of uh, Modi ji on the book on my birthday, by the way. It happened to my birthday, it was the greatest gift for me. And I used to keep the book in the lab, and visitors would come and say, Oh, Modi ji ka signature hai. And some, some visitors said, Please keep it along with your wife's jewelry in your cupboard. <laughs> Who knows? You can show it to your grandkids or whatever. So other great people. And uh, today we have Betic centers in now 14 places. Uh, these are all the initial three centers. Then we have four more engineering colleges. Then uh, five or six uh, medical institutes. Today, right after this, I'm running to JJ Hospital where they want to start a Betic center. And the dean is now saying, let us talk about the details of what to do, how to do. So I'm going to run right after this. And we have agreements with the Maharashtra government, uh, Gujarat government, and Andhra Pradesh government to kickstart and uh, tell them about the policies of both innovation and uh, incubation and healthcare is sometimes in incidental to the whole thing. Okay, so if you look at the performance indicators, what we could achieve, okay, and some people ask, so I put this slide, okay. So we have 14 centers and 100 doctors and so on. Uh, BIG grant now, just we got the 10th, four more, so 10 times now. Google, other, other, other awards, more than 100 lakh of various small awards of 5 lakh, 10 lakh kind of a thing. And more importantly, 50 patents filed, uh, 20 products developed, and then more than 500 to 800, we don't know the numbers really, patients benefited or touched by our devices. But this number will go exponential. We expect this number will become 5,000, 10,000 within one year because more devices as enter the market, the numbers will increase. 
So let me share in just two, three more minutes. I want to see what I can leave things with you, which hopefully you can connect with and maybe take it home. Okay, so four or five slides of take home messages from all the stories I told you so far. Number one is I kept thinking about what is our DNA, you know, what makes us what we are, what had given us this kind of a, you know, numbers. One is that we have what's called as a, so four, DNA has four strands. So one strand is a people strand. So we, you know that we connected doctors, researchers, innovators and investors. Doctors in hospitals, researchers in institutes, innovators in incubators and investors from industry are increasingly coming. But let me also look at government as an investor. So BIG award as far as it's like investment, angel investment from government of India. The other two strands are for me the process of how we do. The book that I mentioned to you, the four chapters are nothing but how do you define a problem, how do you develop a solution, how do you deliver a tested product and how do you deploy it in real life. And what is the purpose of doing that? You define a concept, develop a prototype, deliver a product and deploy in the market. So these are the four strands of that. If you look at it, horizontal axis, you can call it as ideation, invention, commercialization of invention is what is innovation and finally impact or impaction. This to me, the four by four is what we are, okay. And whatever we do, whatever we, how we do, how we explain things, this more or less capture, this framework captures our philosophy and mission, vision, whatever you want to say. Okay, what is in it for you? Uh, one is that you have to connect all the stakeholders. Lesson number one, connect all stakeholders. If you just sit in your silo of your lab and work, it is not going to change the world. You have to go and talk to people. That is lesson number one, okay? And we talk to government and hospitals and industry and academy and all those things. Lesson number two is that select projects very carefully. If you are a BTEC student or a MTEC student or a PhD scholar, remember you and him are going to spend three, four, five years a PhD scholar or if you're doing your own PhD. Five years effort is incredible amount of time and money and effort. Make it count. Select projects, there's a local need, there's some kind of value proposition, innovation potential, feasible to do something meaningful in two, three years and you have other stakeholders who say, I am with you, a doctor or other kinds of people who are giving you inputs. Other lesson is that create the infrastructure. I say that you need infrastructure, you need teams with all kinds of people and you need an innovation culture. I only focus on the last one. I only mentioned to you that innovation, even research is happening at intersections. That's important, okay? The other thing is we have to start embracing failures. I keep saying failure is now foundation to success, failure is essential success, failure is even key to success. So unless you fail a few times in life doing something, something difficult, something challenging, something new, you're really not tested life. If you're not failed, that means you're not doing anything interesting anyway. So notch up a few failures in your resume. I'll tell you in years to come, people will look at you with respect if you have failed doing something new and bold. But equally important, I say that never lose focus on the, your target. So in healthcare, I say to my people that always remember the patient you saw in the hospital struggling with the implant or whatever. Imagine that person's photo in your mind and you say you are working for him or her, not for me or for institute or for India, that patient. So never lose focus on that your thing, okay? And um, last, I really wanted to take two, three minutes, but let me see if I can do it fast. I was trying to search for good people, right? For us, India is a large population, but still you have tough, uh, it's very difficult to find good people who connect with you and you can fight with you on wars like this. Literally what you're doing is a battle. So my question to a lot of people I asked is, how do you identify good people, okay? And I got different answers and I finally found an answer which is satisfied me and also many other people. Is that you find people who are cheerful and confident and comfortable content, but in a different way. You have to find, and please apply to yourself. Please, right now apply to yourself. Find out what you love to do, and the measure of that is that you are cheerful. If you're doing that all the time, you forget food, you forget work, forget family. That means that is what you love to do. What you are good at, because you have been trained at, and I'll give you examples. Let's say a hockey player who is, loves hockey and has been trained in hockey, that's his passion. Passion is what you are, what you are, you know, love to do and what you're good at. Similarly, if you look at what you're good at because you're trained, your education, qualifications, whatever, and your salary comes from that, that is what I call as profession. And an example is a bank officer. 
But the same bank officer, after his office hours, if he goes and teaches the street kids mathematics, and they pay him 50 rupees, 100 rupees, it's not a great amount of money, but he can be paid for that, and then that is what the world needs. That is what is called as vocation, by the way. That's the definition of vocation, by the way. And what it makes you content and what makes you cheerful, what the world needs and what you love to do is mission really. The trick in life is to find as early as possible what connects all the four axes. And then you have found your nirvana. Okay? I found my nirvana. Okay? May you find your nirvana fast, early in life. And may you tell your students and tell, teach your students how to find that, what they love to do and all those things in life early and chase that. India is today that you can chase your dream and you can succeed. And I told you, even if you fail, people value your failures these days. This is my last slide, I think. So I think at the end of the day, you have to lead by example. Okay. And what I would uh, leave you with one thought, if you forget everything else also. Finally, we all are chasing results in life. We want to get some money or you want to be successful or you want to get your promotion or you want to get your student to start a business, whatever it is, you are looking for some results. You know results don't come by dreaming about it, you know, it just comes by action. You have to put in the right action for getting the right results. The question is, how do you know which action is right or wrong? Obviously, you need to have the right vision for the right action. But a vision is a very uh, misused, used, misused word. You see vision statements in, in institutions all the time. And you ask the employees, and I've done that many times, tell me a vision statement, most people are not clear about vision and mission of the thing. Okay? I say that easy thing is to step by and say that what really is your intention in life? If your intentions are right, your vision will be right, thereby your actions will be right, and if your actions are right, you really don't have to worry about the results. It doesn't matter if it's successful or failure. Either way, you, are, you will do fine in life. Okay, so I'll stop with that, and thank you very much. Let us hopefully have a healthy innovation ecosystem, and I want all of you to enjoy this, setting it up, running that, creating some thought leaders of the future, young people who can change the country, you know, I know, country needs them at this point of time. Thank you.